After the acquittal, there was this desire in my heart to file a civil rights action against the government. I knew it had to be done for accountability's sake, that I needed to do it just like I needed to hold the line in the trial for the good of the pro-life movement and the First Amendment rights. I knew I needed to do that despite what would happen to me. Hello, my friends. You all remember very well, especially at this time, Mark Houck. He was the first guy who America woke up to going, whoa, something's really gone wrong with our country. When his house, his family was raided by FBI agents, dozens of them, it sent a shockwave through America. They had pointed guns at his family, banging on his door at the earliest middle of the night kind of morning hours, ridiculously early. And kids are screaming. They're wondering what's going on. He left that house shackled and his kids totally traumatized, his wife traumatized. Unbelievable. He went on to get cleared of the charges. He went on to run for Congress. He went on to now uh, launch a huge four plus million dollar lawsuit against the DOJ. We're going to talk to him right now and get his opinion on what's going on with the DC-9 and all this persecution of pro-lifers in America today. Stay tuned to this episode of the John Henry Weston Show with none other than Mark Houck. Truth has a power of its own. It moves hearts and saves lives. It heals wounds and restores souls, but only if it is heard. That's why our enemies are working non-stop to suppress the truth. That's why LifeSite News is the most censored life, faith, and family news source in the world. They are working to keep you in the dark. They are working overtime to make you feel alone and forgotten. But God says, I will never forget you. God never leaves us without hope of victory. And LifeSite News will never stop sharing the truth that sets us free. We will tell the truth without fear. We will tell the truth without compromise. And as mainstream platforms silence us, we will build our own. That's why I'm pleased to announce the launch of the new LSN TV app, which can bring all of LifeSite News' top video content direct to your phone, tablet, computer, and TV so that you can bypass the censors and keep fighting with us for life, faith, family, and freedom. Don't be alone in the darkness. We've been cancelled. Fight the cancellation. Download the app. Mark, so good to have you back on the program. Thanks, John Henry. Always a pleasure to be with you. Let's begin as we always do with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, Mark, you've been really busy. Why don't you tell us that uh, we covered your being found innocent and announced about your running for Congress. Take us forward a little bit from there. How did that go and, and what's happened? Yeah, sure. Well, always a big thanks to LifeSite, who broke the story for the first time when the raid happened and had been a friend to us ever since. So happy to have an update here. So, yeah, we were acquitted back in January 2023, less than a, a year and a half ago. From there, we just went in a gratitude tour where we were pretty much traveling around the country, keynote speaker for a lot of pro-life events, banquets and stuff, and raised a lot of money for, for a lot of great pro-life missions out there. That was wonderful. And in the midst of all that, John Henry, I was People were inviting me to run for political office, which I told them immediately, no way. And that was not something I wanted to do, nothing I ever envisioned for myself. Yet there was this continual response of like, hey, you should do something like this. Well, what it became for me was a sacred, kind of a sacred duty response moment prayer, discernment, whatever. I was seeing a need and basically I equated to, you know, the soldiers signing up for war after D-Day saying, you know what, I don't really want to do this, but I have to do this. You know, I, I have to, I have to defend my country. I have to do these things. The D-Day guys come to mind and, and they're scared, you know, and then there was that piece of that for me. And, uh, but yet I felt a sacred duty to do what I could if God had given me a platform being the face of the weaponization of the government in America, I felt like I had a voice, and I did. And we put forward a good message. We ran for Congress. We did lose our congressional primary. That doesn't mean we didn't win. You know, you can lose a, ra 
an election, but have victory. And and so and the victory lies in in the messaging and the encouragement that we brought to many people. However, we also learned that it's not very much a fair fight when you get into politics. And so whether whether we did lose, you know, by the numbers, but did we really? It's hard really to know because some of the things are stacked against you. So you got to see the other side of things. You got to see the dirty side of things. It was really in a lot of ways toxic, but yet God's grace once again, just like in the trial, just like when I was arrested, was sufficient. And even though it was very despicable at times, kept a, a clean campaign and we moved forward. And, you know, we, we just pronounced Jesus and we just proclaimed Christ's love in the midst of our, of our campaign. And that was incredible. You know, people, we were beginning every meet and greet with prayer and closing it with prayer, you know. So uh, there was a lot of good that came of it. Beautiful. I have to ask you and feel free to decline. How's Ryan Marie and how are the kids? Because they, I mean, for them, that's crazy. Well, you're you're always sensitive to that as a as a father of many children and knowing your spouse. Look, Ryan Marie had to be on board with that. She's an amazing woman. And how is she doing? She's whether she's struggling or not, she doesn't show it, even though we have an awareness of of all of us have PTSD. When we filed the lawsuit, which we get into, I, I hyperventilated four times reading it. And I said to my wife, look, if I'm struggling with this, how much more are our children struggling with this? So we bought two puppies. We bought two puppies to calm the kids down and, and keep and bring a little joy into the home. Not that they were sad, but there was just this trauma that was around them that was triggered with unannounced guests on the property. You've been to the property, you know, it was just kind of there hovering around them. You know, we still have to address that. But overall, we're all doing good. The kids are resilient. And my wife is just the best. Amazing. Amazing. You're people of great prayer and love for our Lord. So that's not surprising. Let's get into this lawsuit. What is it? What's it about? And what for? Yeah, look, so after the acquittal, there was this desire in my heart to file a civil rights action against the government. I wanted to do it. I didn't know how to do it, but I knew it had to be done. I knew it had to be done for accountability sake, that I needed to do it just like I needed to hold the line in the trial for the good of the pro-life movement and the First Amendment rights holders and, and all Americans. I, need, I knew I needed to do that despite what would happen to me. But I also know that I need to file this lawsuit despite the odds of it not being successful. I needed to do it for the good of America. And so as of March 2023, I really didn't know what to do. Thomas More Society couldn't handle it. it. It's too big of a case. And it's really too big of an issue for a small law firm like them. So thankfully, we had some people come forward that said, hey, we want to help you. And we want we know the people that can do this. So we got a law firm based out of Kansas City, and they've done this before. They've sued government before, even though the king has a lot of immunity. So as we just learned, right, the Supreme Court, like there's immunity in light of what the government can and can't do. However, when they break their own rules, when the government fails to fulfill its own rules and 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 violates all those principles and, and laws that are in place, and in November of 2023, we filed a formal notice. So what happened last year was we put the government on notice that we were going to sue them. In other words, we gave the government an opportunity to say, yes, this was egregious. We don't want this to go to a, a trial. Let's deal with this, settle out of court, whatever. Let's let's be accountable. Well, the government hasn't responded to any of that. Didn't respond at all. For six months went by. So we filed the formal lawsuit on May 20th. 2024. So just a, just over a month ago was the formal lawsuit. In other words, the government was formally notified that they are in a lawsuit now that they have to answer to. The government has 60 days to reply to that. And that's kind of the window in we're in right now. So um, yes, you know, there is a large number put to that. But frankly, it's not about the money. It's about holding them accountable. And I really don't care if we get any any money. It's really just so that the government cannot do this to, to citizens like Paul Vaughn, you, or anybody else. Let's talk about that because we've just seen in, in your wake of innocence, we've seen just a spate of, I honestly think of them as criminal actions against pro-lifers. Let's talk about Paul Vaughn because Paul Vaughn and your case are very similar because he's got 11 kids. He's a dad. 
He was arrested in front of, I believe, seven of his kids at gunpoint as well. Total insanity. And the day we're filming this, he was sentenced, wasn't found innocent like you were, but he was sentenced and he didn't go to the jail of nearly 11 years, 10, 10 and a half years. They were promising fine of up to 300 plus thousand dollars. He was given probation. It's still stunning. He was represented by Thomas More. Of course, they're great. It's still a travesty, even though he didn't get the punishment that they were kind of licking their chops about. Tell us about Paul Vaughn and uh, and your thoughts on what happened to him and, and the ruling. Yeah, well, I talked to Paul, not not since the, the ruling, but we talked in his advance to his trial and he was, we talked even before my trial, you know, there was correspondence there. So, you know, kind of kindred spirits there, you know, cer- certainly a guy who can understand my, what I went through and, and me, him. So there was a lot of uh, brotherly love there and affection for what he was going through and empathy, obviously, for me. And and so uh, whereby I was acquitted, he was not. So I'm happy for the ruling. Obviously, I, I wish he didn't have anything, but I'm happy that he's not going to be in prison. And that that's that sh- should be that way. The, the man shouldn't be serving any time let alone probation. Nonetheless, here he is in a system that's that's compromised, that's corrupt. It's a two-tiered system of justice. And and now he's he's a victim in all, all of that. And that's why one of the reasons why I'm suing. Because somehow miraculously, I I who should have been behind bars am not behind bars. And yet Paul is. And and the the DC nine are, you know, are are being sentenced. So my heart breaks for the for them. They didn't do anything wrong. We know, as Aquinas says, an unjust law is not a law at all. These people were exercising their First Amendment rights, and and even Paul himself, in his own actions, was not in violation of the Face Act, best of my knowledge. So um, this Face Act needs to be repealed, and I hope through my my case that ultimately it, it will be a source for the the repeal of of those laws, so that we don't have to suffer under these unjust laws anymore. Hey, my friend, are you an experienced video editor who can also shoot with a camera? If so, then we've got a job for you right here at LifeSite News. We are looking for a full-time video editor slash cinematographer to work with me in studio right here in Barry's Bay, Ontario, Canada, to help produce our flagship programs. We will also head out on the road to capture live events such as the March for Life. And if you remember that truckers demo, that was awesome. So other national events will be included. Do you want to try your hand? at one of the most exciting places to work in the pro-freedom movement. Join the LifeSite News team to serve Christ and spread His truth on life, faith, family, and freedom. To apply, simply email your resume, demo reel, and cover letter to resumes at lifesitenews.com. Wages are competitive and relocation package is included. May God bless you, and I hope to see you on the LifeSite News team. I just want to... Note to everyone, I mean, if they've been faithfully reading LifeSite, sure, they know it already. But just for those who don't, because I think a lot of people would come to see you and hear you, I I describe it as torture that these pro-life activists are receiving behind bars is unreal. We talked on our show before about Heather Idoni, one of the one of the prisoners. She was given 22 days in solitary confinement with the lights on constantly. She was let out four hours, but it was during the nighttime, so she couldn't see anybody. She's put in solitary for 22 days. And why, by the way, what was the crime? In prison, she shared her food with other prisoners. I just, and this is America. You remember, I'm looking sort of, I'm your northern neighbor from Canada, looking down thinking, what's going on? In the land of the free, in the home of the brave, what's happening? Your case was so stunning. It was sort of the wake up call, but you'd think people would have recoiled in horror. I can't, I can't, I can't believe we just did that to a family of seven kids. You know, it took a German cardinal to come from the Vatican to be with you there after I came and visited your house. But no, they keep going. That's the stunning part. They keep going. They're persecuting these dads of huge families. They're wanting to send them to jail and find them. And then once they get them in prison, they're they're doing torture. What's going on? Yeah, you know, it's 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 brazen, right? They they don't care. And and so what we see are enemies of the state, you know. We see pro-life people as being considered enemies of the state. And so sadly, as a result of my case, I would I wish I could pronounce on your interview and in your airwaves that you have, the platform you have, that, that the pro-life movement has been galvanized as a result of what happened to me. No, 
We've lost a lot of support. People, we can't get people to come out for prayer vigils anymore. This is exactly what the government wants. They want to scare people. They want to scare pro-life people. And they're using Ava Edel and uh, Mrs. Adone and, and, and Paul Vaughn as examples. And, and this is what they're trying to do. My case, okay, we didn't win that one. They're just going on to the next one. And it's the same people that prosecuted me are prosecuting them. You know, for, s- sadly, that's the reality of the situation. And if President Biden gets reelected or that regime comes back for a four more terms, it's going to continue. You know, this is just a setup. The ball is still coming down the, the hill, rolling, and it's getting, picking up steam. And so, you know, these little things that we're doing, these little small victories and lawsuits and stuff, you know, ultimately, hopefully it, it will stop that from happening. But right now, the, the government, the FBI, the DOJ, which does not serve its purpose anymore, is continuing to wreak havoc on the family and the American citizens. So, and sadly, Paul and pro-lifers are, are really the, uh, the the tip of the spear there. Unbelievable. And it doesn't end. So <laughs> this progresses further and further, because remember, we have countries now in, in the UK even, which is, oh, they're so sophisticated, where you're arrested for praying outside a clinic, praying silently, mind you, no sign, just standing there praying. And the lady's asked by the cops, what are you doing here? I'm praying. What are you praying about? <laughs> so this is coming to an America near you folks. It's not the time to back down. It's not the time to say, nope, I'm not going to go outside the abortuary and pray because it's dangerous. No, it's time to stand for your country. It's time to stand for your faith. It's just unreal because the the progression just continues. There's so many things I want to talk to you about. Well, one of the ones that I thought we should address is also, what are you doing today? What What is Mark Houck up to right now? Because I think a lot of people want to know. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. It's been a crazy two years. It, you know, if we coming upon August, which is the month before I was raided in my home. I now, uh, you know, I had a target letter on me at this time two years ago. So for two years, it's been a hot seat. And uh, the last couple months, you know, the Lord has given us a chance to kind of reconnect as a family and, and just kind of pray and discern, like, what are you asking of us? Why did you allow this to happen? Why am I set free and not these other folks? You know, what, what does it that mean? What does that mean for me and my family? And I, and I think we're, we're still to a degree waiting on that. I think we have some idea where we're, we're, we're moving the campaign. You know, we didn't know whether we were going to win or not, but we just were faithful to that. We didn't win. So, you know, whatever, we're, we're just left to move forward with that. Sometimes, you just say, what was that all about, Lord? But I, I think the Lord uh, wanted us to encourage people. You know, our goal right now, what I'm trying to do is really to galvanize the pro-life movement, uh, not only to get President Trump reelected, but uh, to really start educating and you know forming this base to understand the pro-life movement uh, and who we are as a holistic unit, uh, a group of people who are pro-family, pro-mom, pro-dad. And the pro-life movement is not just contained within the life of, of the child in utero. You know, there's so much to what we do. And I think, politically speaking, we don't articulate that very well. And I think uh, even as a whole, you know, Catholics don't always represent that well either. Sometimes we do a, 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 an injustice to to all the good that we do because we don't know how to represent it well. And so I think what we're trying to do now is is to help in the political arena. I still have my ministry that I do to men, but help in the political arena to really shape this messaging because we don't are we're not abandoning the life issue, nor should we. You know, we we don't need to retreat from a good issue, a good issue for us, a, an issue that is of primordial importance. So we just need to articulate it better. And I think God's asking me to help not only the Republican Party which isn't the party of God, but the Republican Party to understand that and then ultimately the nation to articulate it well. Indeed. Now I hear there's a film being made about you, about your life. Uh, can you share some details about that? Yeah. So interestingly enough, in the last couple of months, I was approached by, uh, you know, some producers, some film people that want to want our story to get out there. You know what happened? You know, I, I travel all over the country like you do. I'm amazed at how many people don't know what happened to me. I mean, I'm in that pro-life circles and I'll ask an audience and at least a third of the people 
don't know what happened. They may have heard of it, but they really don't know what happened or they have very little knowledge of it. So sadly, that's the case. These guys uh, in Canada, no less, want to put together a script. They're currently writing the script for a film that's going to be a pro-life film that's going to pretty much bring to light what happened to me. And they're going to pretty much use the trial of uh, United States versus Mark Houck as, as kind of a base for some of their, their storyline. And it's going to be, have a pro-life message. I don't know how it's going to evolve, but it, it looks really positive. It's going to use our witness to kind of in influence others because it, it isn't an, an important story to hear. It's a compelling one. You know, I don't know when it's going to come out, but they're working on it right now. And hopefully in 2025, we'll have something in action at that point. Absolutely beautiful. Mark, last thing for you. When I went to visit you guys, the story was stunning. What had happened to you was stunning. More stunning than all of that is your faith and the faith of your family, your prayer life. Give us just a few words, if you would, about your faith, what that's meant to you and, and what it's like now. Yeah, I recently did an interview, and we have to start seeing, and, and I, I think I'm seeing it, that that suffering persecution really need to be synonymous with blessing. And and as we think of our prayer life, and, and you know, we ask God for blessing, right? We pray for blessings upon this interview. We pray for blessings upon our family. We have to see blessings in the in the midst of 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 the whole dynamic of persecution and suffering. They almost have to, they got to be symbiotic. And so one of the things that I'm learning through my prayer life is that, well, we know no one gets through this life without suffering. However, our attitude about it needs to be one of welcome, almost. Whereas you welcome and integrate the suffering and the persecution into a very well-balanced communication and dialogue with God, right? So this wonderful, I, you know, I love you, Jesus, and, and you love me, and I'm your beloved son and beloved daughter and all this is important. But in the midst of that, we got to know that in that prayer and discernment is going to be some, you know, friction, and there's going to be some times where we're, we're not happy. And that doesn't mean there's not joy. Joy certainly uh, abounds amidst that. But one of the things I'm learning in my own prayer life is to really welcome Welcome those inconveniences, those suffering. And I guess to sum this all up, one thing that I came to very recently was I talk to men a lot and I and I say, you know, you want to be a great, great man, right? A great leader. And most men would say, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to have something like that, or at least in my own sphere of influence. And I said, the key for you becoming great is for you to understand and embrace your insignificance. And one of the things that what it taught me when the government took me away in shackles and chains away from my family, I run, I understood how insignificant I really was, how insignificant I really was to my family and how insignificant I really am to the world. And I saw in the midst of that insignificance that I was significant. That is just so uh, boggling to me that in my own insignificance, I became significant to the pro-life movement, significant to my family. And because I linked myself, and this was the only thing I could do, to our Lord's suffering, I linked on to his significance. And ultimately, that's where I think men find, and I've been finding in my own prayer life, that this is really, and it all comes back to humility, right, John Henry? It's, it's the humility that says, I am God's beloved servant, son, and, and I do his will, and I don't need anything uh, in this life. It's all about him. I, and I, I'm telling men and I say, look, guys, if you want to be great, become less important. And I think ultimately we look at the cross and we say, they would have said back 2000 years ago that that man was pretty unimportant because he ended up on a cross. But yet most significant, most glorious action ever in the history of time. So we see the great leader, the great man in Christ who totally becomes insignificant in the world's eyes, but beyond our imagination in God's eyes. So um, that's just some of my reflections. I don't know where that took us, but it's definitely been profound for my journey. Absolutely beautiful. A journey that America's been with you on and, and has learned a lot from you. Please, please give my best to Ryan Marie and your beautiful kids. Thank you. Where can people learn more about Mark Houck? Yeah, so they can go to thekingsmen.org to learn about my ministry, full-time men's ministry, thekingsmen.org, and all my contact information is there. Awesome. God bless you, Mark. And God bless all of you. And we'll see you next time.
Hi, everyone. This is John Henry Weston. We hope you enjoyed this program. To see more like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to get all the latest content from LifeSite News. Check the links in the description to read more and connect with us on social media so that you can stay up to date with all the latest life, family, faith, and freedom news. Thanks for watching, and may God bless you.